So not too long ago, I went through the process of building a gaming PC inside of the Cooler Master NR200 with an i7-7700 and a GTX 1660 Super. Now with all the crazy GPU shortages out there, the 1660 Super has been in my main gaming rig for the past few months now, waiting on getting another card in my hands when stock uh, comes back to normal. But when I was gaming on this PC, and when I will game on it, eventually once the 1660 Super can make its way back into the Cooler Master NR200, the main sort of dilemma that I've run into is with the cooling. So I mean with the stock Intel cooler that is in this PC, temps can get near around 80 degrees, and that's not all that bad on a 7700. I mean it's well within the margins for overall just CPU throttling, but I wanted to bring the temps down quite a bit more so in like the low 70s to high 60s when under full load. So in order to do that, I went out and bought the cheapest low profile CPU cooler on Amazon, and that is the Vitro L5, which comes in at only 30 bucks. Now, I originally saw some Vitro coolers on Jay's Two Cents. He had made a video on sort of their standard sized cooler, similar to like a Hyper 212, but it had five heat pipes instead of four. So it did give some pretty good cooling performance in that video. So definitely go ahead and check that one out. I'll put it in the description below. But in this video, we are focusing on their low profile model, which gives you much more clearance in a small form factor case like the NR200 and should be plenty of cooling, much better than the stock cooler, but we'll have to put it to the test for the i7-7700. So I went ahead and pretty much mounted all of our Intel brackets on to this cooler. So of course this cooler will work for both AMD sockets and Intel sockets all the way from like LGA 1151 up to LGA 1200. And we have some, of course, the arms that come off the bottom of the cooler uh, for Intel and a different set for AMD. But we have the Intel ones mounted on here. So overall the construction of this cooler feels honestly really, really nice. It feels pretty premium. The black uh, coating, on both the heatsink, the fan, everything looks really nice. And for 30 bucks to get an RGB fan that is pretty well bit built in terms of the construction itself, it feels nice and sturdy. The outer case is really, really nice. And although I wish I could see what the LED looks like on this fan, there's no ARGB header on my motherboard. So we'll probably down the line have to get some kind of LED controller. That way we can plug in the RGB and actually get some RGB into this system. So overall, the construction is pretty good for a $30 cooler. My main concern is definitely with the mounting system itself. So I'll go through the process of actually getting this thing mounted inside of our NR200. And then of course, I'll show you the before and after both the Intel stock cooler versus the performance of our Vetro or Vitro L5. So taking a look at the bottom of our cooler, you can see we just have sort of four screws with these standoffs. So these are just some plastic standoffs that go on the screws themselves. And then the screws just go through to the back of the motherboard. So it's just your typical LGA 1155 uh, mounting system for this particular i7-7700. So I'm just going to mount it with the cords coming off uh, at the top of the case where the heat pipes are coming off of the actual cooler and on to the heatsink. Now, of course, we're gonna remove our little plastic uh, cover on the heatsink. And now with that removed, you can also see that we have uh, some direct contact with the copper uh, heat pipes. And then there's actually an aluminum block that fills the gaps between these heat pipes as well. Now this is where it gets a little sketchy. So on each one of our screws, there's a little rubber washer. Uh, and then we actually tighten this on with four nuts in order to actually secure the cooler to our CPU and to our motherboard. And this is kind of the first I've ever seen of this type of mounting mechanism where it's actually 
nuts on the back side that are tightening rather than just screws threading straight on to our like a like an actual back plate there's no back plate with this cooler system it's just these nuts uh, in order to apply pressure to the cooler onto our cpu now my main concern is just applying the right amount of force on each one of these nuts i don't know really how tight to make these using um the provided just little tiny super thin little wrench in order to tighten these so we'll just tighten them in an x pattern just like we would do uh, a typical cooler on any other top mounted cooler uh, making sure to avoid ripping off any capacitors on the back of our motherboard and that one seems good as well so yeah, not a super huge fan of the actual mounting mechanism. Normally you'd have the back plate. Uh, if we were to look, if we were to look at the existing back plate that came with just the stock, you know, your stock Intel cooler. Um, this of course will distribute a lot of the force from the cooler across the entire back of the motherboard. Whereas this is just on these four nuts. So I don't think it will be a problem, but we'll have to see how the, the pressure is and how our attempts look once we start this thing up and actually stress test it. So let's go ahead. I'll show you guys first the results from our stock Intel cooler, how those fared, and then we'll jump in to the results using our new and improved $30 cooler from Amazon. So there we go, almost a 10 degree drop in temperature from our Intel stock cooler, switching over to our Vitro L5 low profile. So for 30 bucks, we get RGB, we get way better cooling performance, which leads to better CPU performance overall. And being that we're going from a 90 millimeter to a 120 millimeter fan, we should also just have more intake air for our GPU as well, which is of course mounted vertically in our NR200. So overall for 30 bucks, this is a really nice upgrade to any small form factor PC, whether it's a mini ITX build or just a, a small form factor computer. An upgrade like this is one, cheap, and also really nice and effective at adding a bit of performance. Now I will say there are some drawbacks with this cooler. Of course, the mounting uh, mechanism isn't the greatest. It could have been designed a little bit better. Just having four nuts, no backplate at all is a little bit nerve wracking when you're trying to install it, but overall the performance doesn't suffer from that install. So overall for the money, this cooler is honestly not bad at all. Uh, you could go out and spend almost double that money on a Noctua and you might get slightly better cooling performance, but for half the price, this thing is pretty hard to beat. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments about this cooler or the build in the NR200, definitely leave those down below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, definitely get subscribed to the channel, turn on post notifications so you guys can stay up to date on all my latest videos. So I hope I'll see you guys in the next one.